Hey y'all, it's Jennifer. Welcome back to my channel. Today I am coming to you with another reading vlog and this reading vlog kind of has a theme. This is going kind of hand in hand with what has been semi a year long project for me where I am reading books that K-pop idols have recommended and this started life as just reading books that RM from BTS recommended and then it moved into books that all of the members of BTS recommended. And now it is just in general K-pop idols because I have uh, moved into just being completely obsessed with most K-pop groups. I really enjoy almost every K-pop group that I have listened to. And a lot of idols are bookworms. And it's been really fun as an experiment so far because Every book I have read for this project is a book I would say I would not normally have picked up or is not a book that I typically would have chosen for myself. And I found some real hits this way, but I have also found some misses. In this reading vlog, my goal is to hit five books and five different groups. Uh, and so all of the idols that I'm going to talk about today are really big bookworms and actually in fact have just in general, a long list of books they have recommended. And I'm just picking one from each. And there are a few idols that I think I really get on with in terms of reading taste. And so I've tentatively picked five idols and a recommendation from each of them. And I wanted to make sure that I hit different groups. Uh, there are a lot of bookworms in some of these groups, and so I could have picked multiple different members. But I decided to kind of just vary things up a bit. In this reading vlog, I am going to read for sure The Devotion of Suspect X by Kaigo Higashino. And this was recommended by Kai from EXO. EXO is my favorite K-pop group. No one will beat them. I love a lot of K-pop groups. Every time I listen to a new one, I think Gosh, this is great. None of them are EXO. <laughs> I really, really love EXO. And so Kai is one of my favorite members of EXO, which is a funny thing to say when you just love everyone basically equally. But Kai is not one I would have pegged as a bookworm, but he does really enjoy reading. And to my understanding, he really enjoys thrillers. And this is his favorite book of all time. Now, this was a few years ago when I was doing research for this. Uh, I saw in an interview a few years ago he mentioned it, but he has mentioned it also pretty recently as his favorite book. So I thought this would be the best recommendation from him to take. Uh, this is a Japanese thriller that I don't know very much about. And so I'm really excited about this one. I essentially have a very long list of idols and all of their recommendations. And right now these are just the books that are really calling to me. And so I wanted to, to try to mix up genre. A little bit here. So we already have a thriller and I definitely wanted to incorporate a classic or two and so I went with my bias from Seventeen Wanu. Uh, I've just now gotten into Seventeen. They are a group of 13 guys. Please do not ask me why they have 13 members and the group's name is Seventeen. <laughs> I don't know uh, but it confuses me as well. But there are a lot of members of this group and a lot of them are bookworms but my bias is Wanu and his book list is incredible. Of every idol on the list for this vlog, I feel like his his taste and mine will jive the most. It seems like he's really into the classics, uh, but he's also really into historical fiction. And so I feel like I could take any recommendation of his and I would be in very, very good hands. And I just recently got into Seventeen because their most recent album is first of all, incredible and such summer vibes, but they have a song on the album called Don Quixote, which Wanu co-wrote, I believe, with another member, Woozy, and they are both big, big bookworms, and I'm not reading Don Quixote for this vlog. Okay, I'm not doing that. I am going to read it possibly for another vlog, but uh, I know that Wanu has read Don Quixote. He really loves the classics, and for this one, I decided to go with something very obvious, and I feel like this is gonna be a safe choice. It's not really me stepping out any, but I'm going to read King Lear uh, by Shakespeare. I've had that sitting on my shelf upstairs for years. It's one of the few big ones of Shakespeare's that I have left. Uh, and so in many ways, I keep putting it off because I don't wanna ever get to the point where I don't have any of the big ones left. 
but Lear is a tragedy and I've always had a really good feeling about it. Wanu loves King Lear and I think he specifically recommends the four big tragedies and the four big comedies. I don't know if historically Lear has been included in the four big tragedies. It seems to me that that's Hamlet, Othello, Macbeth, and Romeo and Juliet. Uh, but maybe Lear is included in there sometimes. Uh, I'm not really a Shakespeare's comedy kind of girl, so I thought I would go with a tragedy. I also wanted to read something that was recommended by Juyon, who is from The Boys. And The Boys is a group that's relatively new to me. They also have something like 11 or 12 members, and so it's very overwhelming to get into them. But they were one of the first K-pop groups that I listened to, and I love, love, love their music. They also have a lot of really good summer vibes. But I knew that there had to be a couple of readers in The Boys because my favorite music video of theirs is called Drink It, and it is literally based on interview with the vampire. And so I know there are a couple of readers in this group because the video was really smart in how it made allusions to interview both the film and the novel. So the member I think is possibly the biggest reader of the group is Juyan. Juyan has a really long reading list and I think he often gets on VLive, which is one of these platforms that they get on and he'll like talk about books that he's reading. Uh, and so he has a pretty long reading list, but I decided to go with something short from him that I also feel like is a bit of a guaranteed win, which is Nulp by Herman Hesse. Apparently, like me, Juyan fell in love with Herman Hesse when he read Damien for the first time, and he automatically wanted to move on and read more from him, and so he chose Nulp, which is very, very short. I know absolutely nothing about this, and I'm gonna keep it that way until I pick it up. And so I feel good about this one, uh, just because I feel like Herman Hesse and I, we get along. And so uh, I'm looking forward to this one. I also feel like it's gonna be a good idea to have something that's relatively short to try out. I also wanted to read something suggested by Kino from Pentagon. Pentagon is a group that I really enjoy, but I know nothing about. I know nothing about the members other than Kino. I just really enjoy their music and their choreography. And Kino is also my bias in Pentagon. Apparently all of my biases are bookworms. Love that for me. He also has a lot of recommendations, but I think his most famous recommendation is We Are Okay by Nina LaCour, which is a contemporary YA. And I'm gonna say it, I would never pick that up uh, without this incentive. Uh, so I'm interested to see how this goes. I know this was a really popular book a few years ago, and in fact, it may have won some awards. So I'm interested to see how this goes again I like stepping out of my comfort zone, and I feel like there is a good mix of genres so far. So this one, I think, will be the most experimental for me. I think this will go one of two ways. I think I'll either really enjoy it or I'll really hate it. And so I'm excited about it, but I'm also a little bit nervous. Last but not least, I wanted a nonfiction, and I wanted to also cover another idol that I really like, uh, and his name is Jae Hyun if I'm saying that correctly. He is from NCT, and I'll be the first to tell you, I know nothing about NCT. 17 and the boys have like 11, 12, 13 members, okay? NCT has 21. I'm just not even going to attempt to learn what's going on in NCT at any moment in time, but I do know who Jae Hyun is. Uh, he's very, very handsome, and I know he really loves reading, and one of his most famous recommendations is Guns, Germs, and Steel by Jared Diamond. This is another kind of awards darling. I think this won a few awards years ago when it was first published, but this is a historical nonfiction that I feel pretty good about and has been on my radar for a long time, so I'm really interested in it. I would like to try to pick this up on audio. I feel like picking up an audiobook would probably help me out <laughs> in this experiment, and so this might be my audio pick. But right now, this is my TBR. I have so many other options that could possibly swap in and out for some of these, but right now, this is what I am feeling. I love all five of these idols. I'm excited to take their recommendations. I am really looking forward to this project. This is probably the first vlog of many, I feel like, because I have such a really long list of idols recommending books. And some of them have recommended so many that are on my TBR. Wanu, for example, from Seventeen, 
There is something about him. I feel like he and I are having a mind meld in terms of our TBRs and things that we recommend. So uh, I would love to read more suggestions from each of these idols, but I thought it would be great if we got kind of a big spread for this first vlog. I will check in with you when I have started the first book. I'm gonna go on and apologize for the lighting in this clip. We're keeping all of the curtains and the blinds closed because we're going through what I'm gonna call a major heat wave, but I think it's just an indication of what's to come <laughs> for this summer. Uh, it is going to be 96 today, and tomorrow is going to be 99 degrees. <laughs> 99. Uh, and so it's just best if we keep everything dark and don't even really turn on the lights because they also throw off heat. So sorry that you're probably gonna deal with some grainy footage from me, but I wanted to say that I started with We Are Okay by Nina LaCour. And this was recommended by Kino from Pentagon. And I'll fully tell you, Pentagon is a group I don't know very much about. Uh, they have two songs that I absolutely adore. <laughs> I mean, truly adore, like two of my favorite songs I've ever heard in K-pop. Kino is the main dancer, I believe, of Pentagon. He's the first member of Pentagon I knew anything about just because watching one of their videos, he centered in the choreography and I was like, who is this? I need to know who this is. And so I kind of tentatively picked Kino as my bias, even though I don't know anything about anybody else. But it's been a real pleasure to find out when I was researching for this video that Kino is a massive bookworm and he has a radio show or he had a radio show where he often talked about books he was reading and recommended things. This is, I think, his most famous book recommendation, We Are Okay by Nina LaCour. Uh, and this is a book that really took booktube by storm a few years ago and when I went on Goodreads this morning uh, to update and put it on my currently reading shelf I noticed that I think at least 50 of my Goodreads friends had reviewed it and all of the reviews nearly all of the reviews were five stars or just were totally positive. I'm 50% of the way through. The book has to be very short because I started it last night when I got it from the library and the book just has to be very short for me to have moved through it this quickly. And I can see why the ratings are very high. I think the book is extremely well written. I think that's a lot of what's going for it for me. And the reason I'm compelled to keep reading is I just really like the style of writing that Nina LaCour is utilizing. But I think I, and this was a mistaken belief, but I think I always thought when I heard people talking about it uh, a few years ago on booktube that it must have had a mystery element to it. I even assumed it was something similar to like Sadie by Courtney Summers, like just generally kind of a teen thriller that had a romance element to it. That is not what this book is. This book is very much a meditation on grief. There is semi a mystery element to it. You're trying to figure out kind of something that happened in the past, why these two characters are in the place that they are in now. So our main character at the start of the book has gone to college in New York, but she's originally from California and her best friend is coming to visit her and they are on incredibly bad terms. She has lost her grandfather as well uh, and we're led to believe that's part of what went down between her and her best friend. Now there is also a romantic component to the story and I think it's really interesting. There was just a part right when I was reading it this morning uh, where another character mentioned that sometimes your connection with a person moves beyond romance. Like romance is just a little bit banal for something that you feel for certain people. And clearly, I guess we're supposed to feel that way about the main character, Marin, and her best friend, Mabel, which I'm irritated that both of their names start with M-A because that's just a pet peeve of mine in books when your name starts with the same letter. Everybody's name does not need to start with the same letter, let alone the same two letters. But it's a very deep and introspective book to be a YA contemporary. And reading it sometimes, there's just a very depressive quality to it. It feels as though you are experiencing a depressive episode with the main character, Marin, because that's certainly what she's going through. So that's kind of the tone of the book. And I think you need to be in the right headspace for it if you're gonna pick this up. I don't know really anything about Kino other than that. He is, I think, the main dancer 
and possibly one of the main vocalists of Pentagon. And I know that Pentagon is a group that is known for being heavily involved in the creative process of their music. They do their own choreography. They write a lot of their own songs and compose some of the music, I think. And so they're just kind of known for being heavily involved in the creative process. And I can see, I really can, I can see why somebody who is also a writer, I think Kino has composed songs for them, why this book would hit because there's something to the writing that even if you're not really enjoying the story, and I don't know that I necessarily can say I am enjoying the story. I don't know if that's the point of the book. I think the point of the book is for you to really think and analyze your own relationship with grief, but it's definitely a book that I can see an artist would really connect with and another writer would really connect with specifically of like poetry and song uh, because there is kind of like a meter like quality to some of her writing in places which I really like. I would never have picked this up, you know? I really wouldn't have, even though I know it's a very popular book and I know it's a book that a lot of people have truly loved over the years. This is probably not one that would have appealed to me, but ultimately I'm glad I'm trying it because this has been really a year of me stepping out of my comfort zone and reading books that I wouldn't typically pick up normally. And I think sometimes that's worked well for me and other times it hasn't. And I don't necessarily feel like this is gonna be one of the big successes for me, but I will let you know when I finish it. Right now, I feel like it's gonna settle at a three star. Uh, I would love to know what else Kino has recommended because this is a very interesting one. And I wonder if just in general, he's kind of a contemporary person. It seems like a lot of idols are into contemporary fiction uh, and that's not really my vibe, you know? But since this one is so short, I'm glad I decided to start with this one and I'll probably finish it later today. So I did it. I finished We Are Okay. By Nina LaCour and I'm gonna say the end of it got me. <laughs> the end of it got me and really the whole tone of the book I think I said was just very sad and I'm not somebody who's really into a sad book. I've talked before that I really like the tone of a book when it is melancholy and I think there's a difference between something having kind of a melancholy tone versus a tone that's just outright sad and depressing. I think melancholy is just like an air and it's really not the point of the book, let's say. It's just the tone. I think things that are sad are really just in general the plot of the book. The plot of the book is sad and depressing and that's what this one was. This book is definitely a conversation about grief. I think it's asking you as the reader how you deal with grief. I've seen We Are Okay before just talked about as a love story, as like a contemporary YA love story, and I think that does the book a disservice. There is an aspect to the book that is kind of a love story, if you want to say, but it's not really about that. The point of this book is really about grief, I think. There were definitely interesting things about the book and there was kind of that compelling mysterious element overall that made me want to keep reading it. I don't know that I would have been compelled to finish it if it didn't have semi a mystery quality to it. Three stars is kind of where I've settled. I have such a hard time rating books that are in genres that I don't typically read and that I don't typically tend to enjoy because I know I am not the target audience for that book. You know, I understand that I am not really the reader they intended. They intended it to be somebody who is in the YA age range, first of all, but second of all, it's just somebody who enjoys contemporary stories or stories that are meditating on grief. I often steer clear of books that I know are going to be sad. Now, I wouldn't say this book is like a cry fest and it's something that uh, you're upset reading. That's not really true. And in fact, the part that got me was actually a very happy, uplifting part of the book there at the end, where it kind of felt like things really came together in a nice way for the characters. I enjoy the experience of reading it. I don't think it's a book I would recommend to somebody who really wants a plot-driven book. This book is in some ways about the characters, but it is in many ways about the concepts. And that I think was more interesting to me. It was very interesting how the concepts of the book were talked about and how they were talked about on page between the characters as they kind of used like literature courses and what they were currently reading like Jane Eyre. 
they used things like that to kind of discuss the topics of the book in an interesting way. Sometimes that can be heavy handed, but I don't necessarily think it's out of place in a YA book. So this one was, I mean, fairly a positive experience, though the book was not very positive. Uh, but I am glad I read it. I really am glad that it made me step outside of my comfort zone, as I said. I'd be interested to know uh, some other books that Kino has recommended. Hopefully he's read other happier books uh, than this one. But, I mean, I'm glad I read it. I think it was an interesting experience and I am excited to move on to the next book, but I would love to know what else Kino has recommended. Good morning. I really should have updated you last night, but I started the devotion of Suspect X, which was recommended by Kai from XO. So we had to have somebody from my favorite group in this video, you know, and Kai is a pretty big reader. I think he generally likes thrillers and that's what this one is. And I knew Kai would come through, you know, I knew of everybody on the list that Kai's taste would probably be the one I might jive with the most in the video, just in terms of one recommendation. I think a lot of idols are like really into literary fiction and stuff that makes you think. And I knew Kai, I knew Kai's vibe was just, I read for entertainment. <laughs> and so I'm very, very happy that I decided to pick up this one because I'm about 50% of the way through. This is a thriller about a woman and her daughter killing her abusive ex-husband and their next door neighbor helps them hide the body. And it also follows the police who are investigating the crime. And so I started this out feeling very weird about it because I already know the crime. I already know who committed it. I already know, you know, everything about really the murder. But the book is really good at creating dread in you because part of you does not want them to be discovered. And so every conversation they have with the detectives or they have with the police is just very fraught. And you hear, oh, they've gone to the daughter's school to ask her about something and you're going, oh no, what if they find out from this? And so it's an interesting book. This is Kai's favorite book of all time. I think he said it many, many years ago. So that may have changed, but even as recently, as I think 2019 when I was doing my research for this, he said this was his favorite book. Uh, and I think he just really likes this author. I've seen this author whose name is slipping out of my mind. I know his first name is Kaigo, but I don't remember his last name for anything. Uh, and I've seen his name pop up on a lot of these lists recommended by idols. Uh, and so I was lucky enough to pick this up at the library. My hold came in yesterday. And so I'm, I'm enjoying it so far, and my sense is that of almost everything that I'm going to read for this video, this very well may be my favorite one. I just think it's very interesting. I don't know that I've ever read a Japanese thriller, and I don't know really that I can say I'm very familiar with Japanese literature at all, but it's very bluntly written. Uh, and again, some of that, I have to wonder if it's translation, but I'm thoroughly enjoying it so far. And it does seem like a book that Kai would be into. I'm kind of shocked that Kai is actually a reader. I've been watching um, this variety show called Exo Ladder where they go on vacation and everything they do is decided by them playing a game called The Ladder Game which is essentially a game of chance. And so like you may wind up with only one spoonful of dinner versus like two dishes. Uh, and so Kai like never wins this game. And it's so funny to me. <laughs> he is so funny. He's kind of bias breaking me right now because he's so funny about it, about that. Like he gets so angry, but his vibe is like not a reader. Like he gives me a jock vibe. Absolutely. I'm not saying jocks can't read, you know, but I think it's interesting that of the entire group he's the reader and there are a lot of like really quiet dudes in EXO that I would have said were readers but Kai is just interesting and so I'm glad that I picked this one because so far I'm really really loving this. Okay it is update time you're getting post shower Jenny which I recognize is not my best look but uh, I intended to update right when I got home from work but um, it is 92 outside and I want to get this right. Uh, it is 92, but it feels like 103. And I can confirm that for you. It sure does feel like 103. Uh, so it is just so hot. I looked 
awful. Uh, there was no need to put me on camera. So actually I look really good compared to the way I did about 30 minutes ago. But last night I finished The Devotion of Suspect X. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Like I knew Kai would come through, you know, I knew of everybody on the list. Kai and Wanu from Seventeen, I thought I would probably jive with the most. I still think my taste, I probably have more in common with Wanu from what I've seen, but this book was so good. And the whole time, it's so funny, the whole time I'm wondering what made this book Kai's favorite. And so right when I started out, I actually didn't know whether or not I would continue on with the book because I wasn't really into it right at the beginning and I wondered about the structure of it. Since I already knew who committed the crime and essentially why the crime was committed, I was kind of wondering what the structure and what the setup of the book was as a thriller. I am so glad I stuck it out. Truly, this is one that I think if you're gonna read this and you're not feeling it halfway through, this is actually a rare one where I would tell you stick it out to the end because I truly think the end is so masterful that it makes the rest of the book just fall into place. Like it really did feel like a puzzle to me in a way that a lot of thrillers don't. I know a lot of thrillers are about finding out the mystery. Well, since we knew about the crime and we knew kind of why, why the crime was committed, that wasn't the mystery aspect of the book. The mystery aspect is kind of why would somebody help you out in a situation like this. And it's also, of course, let's make sure we don't get caught. So there's like a real level of anxiety to reading it, which I really appreciated. Uh, and there was just something very engaging about it. I frankly rated it five stars. I was blown away by this. Like the last chapter, I was picking my jaw up off the floor. Looking up reviews of this prior to starting it, I saw a lot of people talk about kind of the clinical nature of the prose and because it was a Japanese thriller, they didn't really expect much in terms of emotion or in terms of connection to the characters. And I wouldn't say the book is overtly emotional and I also wouldn't say the characters are the strongest um, that I've ever read, but I did feel towards the end, I did feel very much a connection to them. Uh, and I think that's really why the end stuck so hard was that you were invested not only in the plot, but at a certain point you do become invested in the characters. But this is one of my favorite books of the year. I knew Kai would really give me something. I knew I would be satisfied with Kai's pick because there's just something about Kai that I really like. Uh, and he's one of my favorite idols. And I just really knew that whatever he picked would probably be a book that would jive with me. And I was correct. This was amazing. Uh, so, so far, so good. I'm really enjoying everything. I did put on hold at the library Guns, Germs, and Steel, which was recommended by Jaehyun from NCT. This is Russian Roulette okay, at my library. I decided I wanted to get this on audiobook because it's a nonfiction, and I really hope it comes in because I want to read a nonfiction in this video. I think we're actually doing pretty well in terms of genre and kind of choosing a bunch of different genres for this, and so a nonfiction would really round things out in my opinion, but I have a six-week wait on this. The thing is, you do kind of play Russian roulette a little bit uh, with my library in terms of holds because they do promote certain cards over others, if that makes any sense. And so you may get in line behind 10 people, but you will actually get the book before the four people ahead of you. So they will technically make you fifth in line. But it also means that when you get in line for a book, somebody who joins the line after you very well may get the hold before you do. So six weeks is kind of meaningless. And it actually could be here tomorrow, uh, but it may actually be longer than six weeks. Uh, and since I know what's at my library, I don't really want to pick it up on Audible or anything like that. And so this is one that may not actually happen for this video, but I'm really interested in this. This has been on my TBR for years, and so I'm excited to read it. I hope it does come through. In the meantime, I started Nulp by Herman Hesse. And this was recommended by Ju Yun from 
the boys. Juyun has a lot of recommendations, but apparently he fell in love with Damien by Herman Hesse, and so did I. <laughs> and so immediately after that, he wanted to read more Herman Hesse, and he picked up Nulp, which I will say is not a book I've heard of. It's very, very short, so that's why I decided to pick it up. I do think it'll work really well in this video because I can slam it out pretty fast. But this is about kind of a wanderer. I feel like this is just very beatnik. And I'm about halfway through it and it feels so on the road to me. And I hate on the road, so it's a shock to me to say that I'm really enjoying this. It is Herman Hesse though. And I just feel like he's a favorite author for me now. Uh, and so I'm excited about this. I've watched a video where Juyun was talking about this book and how much he really enjoyed it, even though it's a very simple story. It's dealing with really complex themes, uh, which of course was also true of Demian to a certain extent. And this was apparently Herman Hesse's most popular book prior to Demian coming out. Uh, and so I'm excited about this. Right now, it's not gonna be a five star. I feel like it's too short to get five stars, but I'm interested in everything that Ju Yun has recommended because I think he has incredible taste in literature. I think he and I are gonna get along in terms of book lists, but that's where I'm at right now. I will update you when that is finished. Hopefully Guns, Germs, and Steel does come in at some point. Um, again, I apologize for my appearance in this vlog clip, but I told myself I was gonna start making vlogs more casual. I don't know why I feel like I have to be so put together for a vlog clip when that really should just be me in real life. And sadly, this is me in real life. But I will check in with you later. Hopefully I will finish Nulp maybe tonight. Okay, we're in a different location. It's weird, I know. The light I am just constantly fighting with. We're still in that massive heat wave, but I wanted to give you an update. I have finished Nulp. It took me a really long time to finish basically because there were a few days in the middle of the week that I just didn't read. And so though this is definitely the shortest work on my TBR for this vlog, it's taken me the longest to read. And at about the halfway point, I was gonna rank this at the bottom. Of the three that I have read so far, I was going to say that I think this is the weakest entry, but that's not true. Uh, I now think it's We Are Okay by Nina LaCour, Nulp, and then The Devotion of Suspect X. Nulp is just so short, it doesn't feel as though you can really get a handle on it, but I wanna say the ending of this really pulled it through for me. Akin to The Devotion of Suspect X, I really think the end of this book was what made it incendiary. I still was rather disappointed by it because uh, I watched a video where Juyan was talking about reading this book and I think he mentioned that this was Herman Hesse's most popular novel before Demian came out. And so I went into this with a certain set of expectations thinking that the book was going to be very similar to Demian, and it's just too short to do that. Demian is also a short book, but this is literally novella length that had to have been only 90 pages or so. And the translation I got also didn't hold the same magic for me that the translation that I got of Demian clearly did. I wonder if some of my love for Demian came from the fact that I read an older translation of it. And so I think I probably lost a little bit of the magic of the prose with the translation that I got. I got a free translation on uh, Kindle. So I don't really even know who the translator of this was, but this is set up as three different stories about a character called Nulp, who is kind of a wanderer and a vagabond a little bit. And this part at the end, really elevated the rest of the book for me and actually made me rate it four stars because the very end, the very last chapter, oh my gosh, it was so good. It was just so good and it was also characteristic of what made me love Demian. And it was just as incendiary and just as beautiful as Demian was. And so definitely Herman Hesse is now a favorite author for me. I am obsessed with him. Just truly, I am obsessed with him. So I'm glad I picked this one up, but I am also glad that I didn't leave this for the last. 
I do want to work my way through all of Herman Hesse's works. And I think knowing that this one is short, it's probably one I would have left to the end. And I'm very glad I didn't do that. I think it would have been a really massive disappointment to me had I waited to read it at the end of reading the rest of his works. And so I'm glad that Juyan recommended this. I'm interested to read other things that Juyan has recommended if he also loved Demian and Herman Hesse. You're gonna move on to 17. And my pick for this uh, is my bias in 17, Wanu. And I picked him as my bias before I knew that he was a book lover. I can pick them though. I can sniff out the book lovers in K-pop. And so I'm excited about him and his book list. I really almost wanted to do an entire video just reading his book list because everything he has read, I have either read and loved or it is a book that is on my TBR or it's something that just sounds really good to me. So I really struggled with picking a book for him. He really likes the classics. Uh, and he also apparently likes historical fiction. And so there was one on his list that is a historical fiction set at the time of like Cleopatra and Antony, but I think is following their child, Cleopatra Selene. It sounds fantastic, but I can't find it anywhere. Apparently it is a French book that was available in translation at one time, but I guess has gone out of print. Uh, and so I can't find that anywhere, but that is the book that I really wanted to choose. But he loves Shakespeare. Wanu loves Shakespeare, and he specifically recommends uh, the four big tragedies and the four big comedies. I can't remember if he mentioned Lear as one of the four greats, or if Lear is one that he mentioned elsewhere that he loved, but that is my pick. I'm going to try King Lear. I'm gonna try it. This is one I am shocked I've never read. It is a Shakespeare play that has haunted me for years because I know I'm going to love it, you know? I really know that this one is one I am set up to really love. Apparently, a lot of strong, villainous female characters, which I love from Shakespeare. And so, I'm going to try this. I think this might be the final book that I read for this vlog, but this is the one I think I'm going to try. And hopefully I really enjoy it. There are so many on Wanu's list that I'm really interested in. So if I don't like this or if I'm not vibing with reading a play, then I'll move on to something else. So we'll see how this goes. Let's try King Lear. I feel sure that I'm going to love it. So I finished King Lear and to no one's shock, I rated it five stars. I feel like this was a little bit of a cheat you know, placing a Shakespeare on the list. I feel like that was a shoe in for me. And I kind of wanted there to be at least one guaranteed five star. And I'm really pleased that really for the most part, the entire project was a success because there is not a single one of these books that I wouldn't recommend. And really there wasn't one of them that I didn't truly enjoy. I enjoyed the reading process of each of them. But Lear is one that has been on my TBR for many, many years. And it's also a play of Shakespeare's that I've always been shocked I never came across in school. It's not one that was ever taught or on any of my curriculums. And I think there are probably many reasons for that. I think high school kids probably connect better with the angst of Hamlet. I certainly did. Uh, but there is something about the female characters of Lear that I think also really would have connected with me as a teenager. And I just adored the female characters in this play. Adored them. I really loved everyone in this play. Edmund, though, Edmund might be my favorite one. I loved Edmund. Again, I feel like this was a little bit of a cheat, and I feel like it was pretty locked in that I would rate Shakespeare highly. And I've constantly had Lear on my radar, but I've never wanted to pick it up. I really kind of wanted to leave Lear to the last. And in truth, it very well may be the last of the tragedies that I had to tackle uh, that were really big names. And I think sometimes the reason that some Shakespeare plays are lesser known is that they are not as good as the more popular ones. I'm very basic when it comes to Shakespeare and I really am awed by the names that are most famous and the plays that are most famous. They work the best for me. Hamlet, Romeo and Juliet, Richard III, all absolutely incredible plays and I see why they are the most popular. Lear I think is somewhere in the middle it's close to the top, but uh, it is not in the upper echelons of 
Hamlet, Romeo and Juliet, Macbeth. But it should be. I really loved Lear. And there was this real theme throughout the play of stars. And really the backdrop was basically astronomy. And it was just so very interesting. I loved how Shakespeare could kind of make everything Lear said allude to the stars. It was beautiful. I mean, it was just absolutely beautiful. Is it the most beautifully written of the plays? I don't think so, but it still was really enjoyable. And coming off of reading an ancient play earlier in the month where the experience wasn't the best because I really did feel as though I should have watched a performance, this was really enjoyable just to read on the page. And I always find Shakespeare to be like that. I really enjoy just reading his language, analyzing his language. And so this was a really positive experience for me. I read it in one sitting and I knew that would happen. Uh, I do feel like it was cheating a little bit. I feel like I should have picked a more difficult book from Wanu. I think Wanu also loves Sherlock Holmes and I don't really. And so I think his favorite is Hounds of the Baskervilles. I should have tried that. I really should have. But since Shakespeare showed up on his recommendations so much, I decided to just go with the Shakespeare. It's still Ancient Sathon, so it fits in really well. Uh, and overall, I would have to say I think the entire project is a success. I'm disappointed that I didn't get to Guns, Germs, and Steel uh, because I'm still on hold at my library. That may come in in the next few weeks and then maybe I'll do another vlog like this because I'm still very interested in it. So it's a shame that I didn't really get the five that I wanted, but the four that I read were really successful. Two five stars, one four star, and one three star. I can't really ask for anything better than that and I read that in the course of a week. I am really proud of myself. It feels good, especially having been in a slump that I wanted to read as many things in one week as I did. But I guess I'm going to wrap up the vlog here because I feel like I've been talking for a very long time. But if you have read any of these, I would love to know your thoughts down below. If you listen to any of these groups, please let me know as well. But that's going to be all for me today. I hope you're all having a great week. Happy reading. Goodbye.